years ago my husband Kurt and I adopted a little rescue dog her name was Ginger and as you can see she's a part corgi and part chihuahua anyway a friend of mine Helen told me that I should bring Ginger out here to the Rocky Mount dog park that had just been built a couple of years ago and we came out here and just loved it and while I was here I began to meet people and talk to people and realize they had great stories so I decided what a great place to do a little documentary a little film about that I decided to call Tales from the Dog Park. And I want to thank all the people that took part and gave me permission to film their stories. I wish I could have gotten all of it down, uh, but it would have taken several hours for us to view. But thank all of you all, and at some point, I hope to post it up on YouTube for everybody to see it. But thank you all for coming, and without much ado, to Tales to the Dog Park. So how did this dog park begin? Uh, the Best Friend Dog Park began um, with the vision of the former city manager, Charles Penny. Uh, I became director in 2013, and one of the first things he gave to me was a letter from one of our citizens named Delby Manning. And Ms. Manning had sent a letter to Mr. Penny at the time, city manager, saying she thought it would be a great idea for the city to have a dog park. And so I basically took that letter and started calling um, the one person I know that knew everybody. Um, the first person I called was uh, Martha Lamb. She was the, uh, a good friend of mine and I worked with her on a lot of committees. And I said, Martha, um, you know, I know you, you love dogs and pets and we want to start a dog park. Can you get some of your friends together? And um, she quickly got uh, a group of um, ladies together um, and we started meeting and um, developing a plan and a vision for the dog park. Um, we hired a consultant and uh, once we hired a consultant, uh, we continued meeting with our, our citizens and um, the idea was born. Um, we had several locations that we looked at, um, but Sunset Park um, was chosen primarily because of all the fame about property we had on location and so many people had fond memories of Sunset Park and riding through um, the area and, uh, and so we, we decided to, as a committee to select Sunset as the location for the dog park. The back history, uh, you know, as most people know, Sunset Park um, and 99 Hurricane Floyd uh, devastated our community. And one of the areas that it, it really impacted uh, the most was down at Sunset Park. And so there were some uh, Riverside apartments that sat down on this property. And um, after 99 up until 2013, the, the property had just basically sat uh, vacant and our staff were continuing to mow. And, and so as we were looking at the project, we decided that um, as, a, as our staff that this would be a great way for us to um, give this land back to our citizens. And so uh, the committee uh, ended up settling on um, Sunset Park, um, the location. Oh, we consulted with um, uh, uh, Terry Nobles, we consulted with um, Helen Lockery, um, the friends of, um, uh, of uh, excuse me, the Paws in the Park um, uh, committee. And then we hired um, uh, Nick Kuhn, which is, he's working with us on our Parks and Recreation Master Plan to develop a, a plan and a, um, a project scope for our, our dog park. And uh, Nick did an excellent job of working with our committee and our community to come up with a, a phased approach. Um, 
the amenities are, 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 are top notch. Um, the layout was first class and uh, uh, it's all um, uh, in, in, in uh, good taste of our citizens. Our dog park began in earnest in 2013 and um, my responsibility as park superintendent was to coordinate the construction and so without a lot of, of uh, background or experience with dog parks, <clears throat> of course I went I went to look for the items that we would need and um, uh, there was a company that offered uh, dog park amenities that I was impressed with and they had some very, uh, they had the most comprehensive line of equipment. <clears throat> um, we did want to make this uh, to be very attractive and functional. It's a nine acre dog park and uh, so there would be a lot of fencing and uh, we found the uh, black vinyl coated fencing to be the most attractive. It's not as, doesn't stand out as much. It kind of blends into the landscape. So we did that. Um, all of our amenities are the same color and some of them have uh, uh, cuttings in them that describe what they are. Um, shade structures are coordinated with the same color and um, water fountains are made for humans and dogs. So it was all specially made for a dog park. One of the things we use for, for fundraising for uh, the uh, dog park is we have a brick campaign um, where individuals can come and purchase a brick um, from um, our department in honor of a loved one or, 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 or one of their, their, their lost pets um, to help uh, maintain um, the dog park. Um, we have always believed from day one that it should be held um, at a very high standard. And so when people go by, they'll notice that we try to keep it that way. A couple of us from Animal Crackers reached out to the city, to Kelvin Yarrell with the city, and we told them we had an interest in having a dog park. We met for, gosh, a year and a half or so, and we would have monthly meetings, and the city really made it happen. We just happened to be on their committee to help them, but we started out thinking, oh, we're going to do a dog park, we'll make it where We'll reach out to the Boy Scouts and let Boy Scouts do their Eagle Scout projects and all. And the city came back to us after, I don't know if they did some research, but they came back and said, we want to do a dog park, but we're gonna do it our way. And so we were like, sure. And their way was not like getting Boy Scouts to do, you know, they mm -hmm. wanted it very consistent. They wanted like the fence was consistent with every fence in the park system of Rocky Mount. So they were very, they drew up a plan. The city went around to different, uh, Kinston, North Carolina and different places and um, saw their dog parks there. And so um, we just kind of helped them, you know, when, when they said, okay, phase one was gonna be the fence. And we kind of worked with them and helped them. But the city, I have to give them total credit. The city pretty much put this together. And so that's kind of how it started. Just a couple of us really wanting to, um, just felt like Rocky Mount needed to be a little more dog friendly. And through our organization of animal crackers, there were just several things we wanted. One being a dog park. Kelvin put in his budget. Picture wise, they didn't have to do much here, except do the fencing. We did the concrete you know, walk the concrete way. But other than that, this is all where Riverside, you know, um, so it's all, you can still see lots of, you know, parts of where Riverside mm -hmm. was. So I am so proud of this dog park because we were trying, when we first started talking to Kelvin, we were talking to him from an economic standpoint. You know, that just think if we could get people off the highway, bring them in with their animals. And so, you know, he, this was all kind of new to him. Several people in the committee did not have animals. Most of us have or, or do. And um, so I think when Kelvin and the city went around to other communities and started seeing some of the numbers of people 
pulling off, like, you know, they worked with their travel and tourism departments to see how many people would pull off the highway, you know, to use. Um, we just, I was so thrilled from an economic standpoint as well as just making Rocky Mount more pet friendly. Sadly, I don't have my own animal, but Millie's like my animal. So anytime I get Millie, uh, she and I always come out here. She loves it out here. And the sweetest dog. She is such a sweet dog. They kind of call her a pugador. So she's got some pug in her and a lot of lab, but I think she, she's got like three other breeds in her. Hi, my name's Martha Lamb, and I'm a Rocky Mount native. And now I'm sitting out at the dog park. Now I've got to tell you a little story about this dog park. It used to be Riverside Apartments. And I, along with a lot of other people, had so many friends. Riverside was special. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about the dog park. I got interested in a dog park simply because I was the tourism director here. And you would not believe the people who bring their dogs with them when they travel. When they would call our office to see how many hotels we had, the first thing, two, first one of the first things they'd ask is, do you have a dog park? I thought, what is a dog park? I said, I know, but we got a lot of grassy area around the hotels. And they said, well, that's not exactly what we mean. We don't want our dogs out in the street. We want a dog park. We want a dog park for large dogs, park for small dogs. We want a place where they can get water, a place where we can sit down and watch our dog. And then they explained that a lot of times they travel with the children and the dogs and with Rocky Mount being, you know, between New York and Florida and having I-95, we are huge in tourism. People just don't realize. So on a given day, how many kids and how many dogs jump out of a car and all they want to do is just let those dogs run and let those children run. A dog park. Now, wouldn't that be interesting? Our Kelvin Yarrow was on the tourism board with me and he was in charge of park and recreation. And one day he called me and he said, Martha, now that Riverside has been flooded out, and we're so sorry about that, what if we put a dog park there? And I said, you know what? You just wouldn't believe how many times tourists asked me about a dog park. So we thought about it, and we did our homework. We looked at all kinds of dog parks just to see before we could sell our, sell our idea or we wanted to show it. Then we went to the board, to the uh, county um, tourism board, it was run by Claude Mayo at that time, I believe. And they said, a dog park, why not? And that's how it all happened. The neatest thing Kelvin and the group from Parks and Recreation did is it wasn't just a group making it happen. They opened it up to all the citizens. And we had lots of people from the city of Rocky Mountain coming up with the ideas of how to decorate it, how to fence it, where to put it, what phases we could go through, and that through the generosity of, of the people in Rocky Mount, as you know, Rocky Mount's the most generous place in the world, we now have probably the nicest dog park in eastern North Carolina. We have people raving over our dog park. Um, it's not only used by tourists now, it's used by the citizens in Rocky Mount also. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Rudson Wooten Lamb Jr., named for his father behind me. They are both very nice dogs. I'm married to one of them, and the other one I look after just like I do that one behind me. That's good. We're so happy to be here at the dog park. This happens to be Woody Woot's first time in the dog park. He's only a year old, and we love him so much. And he didn't know, but his mom was one of the founding fathers of the dog park. How about that, Woody Woot? The dog park has been a long time dream um, of a lot of people in Rocky Mountain. We have a 
great community of people who protect and promote dog uh, ownership and, and the welfare of dogs. And, and they've made a big difference in the community. And of that group and many just dog owners, there's been a big desire for a place to take dogs that they can socialize. And, but I had just, that had been party talk to me. I'd never really even thought about it. And um, uh, Kelvin Brandt, who's with the city, called me and said he wanted to talk to me about a parks project. And I'd been a little bit involved with the park service because of the veterans park, so I was a little bit familiar. And we, uh, he came over to my house and we talked about it and he said, we have a perfect place for a dog park. Um, that, and, and described what I knew had once been this very area, which had been full of uh, homes, apartment homes. And in fact, a lot of my friends had lived out here when they were newly married. But the, it had been flooded and we can't put housing for people out here anymore. And it seemed as though that was gonna be a great use for the park. When he told me there were, it was nine acres, I was just stunned. Again, being a dog park visitor, um, Colorado Springs is the only place I think I've ever been to a park that was this size or larger. Um, so that sounded so good to me. And we began to talk about the benefits, not only for pets, uh, but for bringing to the forefront in people's minds how pets should be cared for properly. And the city people who had talked about it had thought those things through. I think um, at that point, maybe they weren't as cognizant of what a great tourist draw it would be. But I shared my experiences and, and anyway, there was great enthusiasm uh, as, I, as they took my ideas and thoughts um, in fact, they even let me name the park. So uh, that's how it became Best Friends Park. And uh, the Kelvin and the whole city staff were just really excited about it. Uh, but it's been amazing to me. I remember the day I came for the opening and it was a free for all and I don't, there were as I recall, 70 some dogs here. And there were maybe three scuffles of rah, 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 and that was it. They were so thrilled. The dogs were having such a good time. Well, for anyone who's a dog owner, if your dog's having a good time, you're having a good time. And it, it becomes uh, much like music. It becomes a common language when you love your pet. And um, it's been, to my mind, one of the greatest things Rocky Mount has done for pulling our community together in, in, in my memory. When I'm in town, I come to the park probably three to four times a week, and I hear this from other people. I can get, I live not too far from the dog park, and we get in the car. If I make a certain turn, they're quiet, and as I've mentioned, they're great riding in the car, but if we are in any fashion on the route that comes to the dog park. They go crazy. It's hard to drive the car and hard to listen, and uh, but they love it. I have two dogs, and I've always thought that two dogs are easier than one dog because uh, they just, you don't have a guilt trip when you go out to dinner and that kind of thing. But my dogs have always before, one has been several years older than the other. And, um, but this time I had lost an old dog of many years and uh, had fostered a few just to, to keep the house with the dog in it. And, uh, but I was looking for a boxer and my daughter convinced me that I definitely wanted to rescue. And um, so Dr. Turner uh, called me from Riverside Vet that many years ago and said, we have a boxer mix puppy that needs a home and so I, that was how I got Shug. These are our boys, Chief, 
one blue eye and one brown eye. That's how you know how who Chief is. And this is Master. We moved to Rocky Mount in uh, October 2013. Michelle had taken a job down here. And when we moved to town, uh, we began asking folks where the dog park was, where we could go run the dogs. And quite literally, within two months of us moving here, we'd gotten wind of the city's Parks and Recreation Department looking at um, a community meeting. Within two months, we had, had volunteered to, to work on the committee to select, look at select site locations, how big were we going to make it, what kind of a financial investment, of course looking for donors, things of that nature. And it was a very, uh, there was a lot of citizen involvement in it. It was a great collaboration between the citizens of Rocky Mount and, and uh, the City Parks and Rec Department. But I knew from a minute that I saw this location because of mature trees and the attachment to all the people that I've met that um, that used to call this home. And um, I've heard many stories being out here where a um, woman would tell me about all of the houses and who lived in the houses around the dog park. I have since been involved and volunteer on two of the events every year that the city does, the Paws in the Park in the spring and the Splash Park Bark Park event that is held over at Sunset Park um, in the fall. And I just see those growing and becoming um, regular parts of our, our community schedule. If you ever find yourself stuck in the middle of the sea, I'll sail the world to find you. If you ever find yourself lost in the dark and you can't see, I'll be the light to guide you. Find out what we're made of when we are called to help our friends in need. You can count on me like one, two, three, I'll be there. And I know when I need it, I can count on you like four, three, two, and you'll be there. Cause that's what friends are supposed to do, oh yeah. And then you're turning and then you just can't fall asleep Cause that's what friends are supposed to do, oh yeah I'm a federal employee, and my last job was with the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. I was a budget analyst. It's one of the big intelligence agencies there in the D.C. area. You've heard of NSA, CIA, yeah. those places, DIA. Well, I've worked at DIA, NSA, and then my final job was with Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Most of my, most of my work was in the budget and right. accounting. I've been coming here since they've opened the dog park. People. I've met quite a few people here. I got her from the Wake County SPCA. Well, Gizmo is fine. He's he's low key since he's he's the older one. Gypsy's high energy. She constantly coaxes him to try to get him to play and run. I just open the door and let him out, and they run. They'll run out into the to the yard. Oh, I enjoy Rocky Mount. I, I I'm looking forward to further develop and come back to where where it used to be. We have had a dachshund, well, two dachshunds that lived to be almost 16. And you can see the age that we are. So we were really leery about getting this little baby from outside of Pinehurst named Willow. And we did this about three and a half years ago because the uh, owners that had these uh, little dabble dachshunds this was going to last, be the very last of her babies. And this is our baby. And we have really found out that it has done a wonderful job with both Hassel and myself. 
because she does let us get up and move and Hassel just has to tuck her in with the blankets and this one has been allowed in his bed. I was surprised about that. <laughs> and the park, all I have to do is make a turn and say we're at the park and she starts crying with joy. And if the, and if the weather is pretty, I feel guilty for not getting this doggy to the park because she wants to go, as you can see right now. Mr. Weeks, <laughs> anything about the park that you like? <laughs> well, and I like the park. We've been coming here quite a while. It's a lovely park. It's nice for dogs. I see a lot of people here I know, one of the kin folks and everything else. It's a nice thing for Rocky Mount to have. It's amazing where people come from that come here. They're from out of state and all over. Yeah. Well, Alvin Wilson we met. Uh, found this cousin that I met. Uh, they come from everywhere. Because I have had 35 years of wonderful teaching experience and I have been retired for about seven now. Uh, my husband retired when he was 89 and he is almost 93. And he was out planting his garden before we came out here to uh, meet you and see the dog park. To Shonda Bryce. Um, I live here in Rocky Mount, but I'm from Quitakers. I'm a manager at Aldi, and um, it's just pretty much me, Snoop, and my boyfriend. <laughs> um, I got him when he was five weeks old in the, from Elizabeth City. He's eight months now. Um, he's very hyperactive, and he loves to be chased, and he loves to take items that doesn't belong to him. I didn't want a pit bull. I wanted a Rottweiler, ended up with a pit bull, but she is our baby. She's two years old, and uh, she's totally voice command. <clears throat> Never a problem. Sweetest dog you ever want to meet. When we got her, she was sitting in the middle, just quietly waiting for us, and all the other puppies were barking and whining, and she just, and she just sat there patiently, and that's, that's the one we're getting. We're very thankful for this dog bark. I mean, our, our dog loves it. It's, it's just nice. so peaceful, you know, it's just very... Come and sit out here for an hour or so and let her play and run. and She's a lot calmer. <laughs> we live full-time in an RV, so we've been all over the country. We've we've seen some dog parks <laughs> or, and dog walks. And uh, this is probably... This is about the best equipped yeah, dog park. Yeah, it's the nicest. It's just big. Yeah. You don't have dogs on top of each other. And like it's Raleigh. The people, Raleigh ones are small, and they've just got so many dogs. You know, this one's not, you're not dodging <laughs> manure all the time. My name is Debbie Taylor. I'm here. I was born and raised here in Rocky Mount, and I live a few blocks from that uh, dog park here, and I come often. My dog's name is Penny. She's a Doberman and she's a rescue from the Rocky Mount Animal Shelter. Well, actually, I had been looking for a little small house dog, and I was going to the animal shelter several times a week just to see what they had in, and uh, they called me and told me they had a dog. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but they thought I would be really happy with her. So I went down, and needless to say, I came home with a 95-pound Doberman. I don't have a fenced-in backyard, so she loves to come out here and socialize with the other dogs. But really, it's just her and I uh, in, in a two-bedroom house, and she takes up a lot of space, as you can see. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've uh, lived in Charlotte for uh, 10 years, and I moved back here to help take care of my mother that was ailing in her health, and I just wanted some company, so I thought I would seek me a little very friend. Tell me about I met a lot of new people here at the dog park and I re reunited with some with some uh, friends that I had back when I lived here before. I love being back home. I love the I love Charlotte because there's a lot to do and see. It's a beautiful city but I also like the country life. I'm a country girl. Well I get a chance to meet a lot of people and hear a lot of dog stories about other people's fairy friends. That's one. As a matter of fact, I know more animal names than I do people names. <laughs> this is probably one of the best investments Rocky Mount could have made. Okay. I do home health care and I really enjoy working with uh, people that has disabilities and helping them. Actually, I enjoy doing that, but like I say, I'm glad to be back home. There's no place like home.
uh, you ladies have been on the road since when this morning? Uh, it hasn't been that long. We got up maybe like seven-ish. Yeah. It hasn't been bad. Yeah. And we just searched for a dog park and found here to let the, the dogs come play. How did you find out about the dog park? We just typed it into Google Maps and okay. it came up. To get the exact location, we use the Google. Wait. It's much better than our dog park back home. Oh, it's huge, it's, it's gorgeous, big. lots of grass, beautiful trees, so there's shade. Yeah, it's, it's a great dog park, a place for agility, for little dogs. One of the best dog parks I've actually ever been to. And I've been to a lot of different dog parks. So this is something <laughs> we normally do with our dogs is we mm -hmm. just Google search dog parks. To... I live in Savannah, Georgia right now. Um, and we're just kind of traveling through. We like to go off and do different adventures and go on hikes and just be outdoorsy and find places for the dogs to run free off their leash. We have some family up and down 95, so we just go back and forth and that's how we came across the dog park. This is Bailey, four-year-old Shih Tzu, and a five-month-old Zujan Bella. Roland Groder. Right. Uh, we've been here nine years. And I'm in real estate, working with Caldwell Banker, watching properties. Um, business has really started to pick up, to turn it around here in Rocky Mount. And we have families that have uh, left Rocky Mount years ago, working in other states, coming home. We have a daughter living in Rocky Mount, right over here in West Haven. Um, and um, we're just loving Rocky Mount. Go run! This is Zoe. Mark. Yes. Hi, I'm Sherry Williams, and my dogs are Zoe, an Irish setter, field setter, and Willow, also a field Irish setter. They're both rescues, and we've been coming from day one. It's perfect, all this acreage in order for the dogs to play, make friends, get to learn how to get along with their peer group. People. In my experience as a realtor, it is a huge advantage to Rocky Mount for the people that live here, the people that see it and know it, and come from other areas. It is so unusual to have nine acres for a dog park anywhere outside of Raleigh. And I don't even think Raleigh does. I think they have smaller dog parks and probably more of them. But it's just a tremendous advantage with all this space, and the facility is gorgeous. It's well kept. The water's the the dog poo stations, it's just, it's just an excellent place for dogs. Climb. Cooper through. My name is Peggy Wendling. Um, I'm originally from the Cleveland, Ohio area. Moved, well, moved a number of places before we moved here 27 years ago. Um, I've had dogs all my life. Um, I'm a retired educator, I have a couple goals. One was to get my uh, then five-year-old golden retriever uh, registered to become a therapy team. Cooper and I did so well with it. And Tucker is 16 months old um, and he, he and I have just completed our work and our evaluation two weeks ago and we have just recently become a therapy team with, I might add, a perfect score which means that he can go into any type of a, set, a setting, um, whether it's real, real busy and chaotic or real, real calm. I'm sorry, baby. We also um, started, I started with Cooper volunteering at Spring Arbor uh, Assisted Living Center. And Cooper and I also do a reading program at OLPH yeah. School very last summer and we're getting ready to line things up at the Harrison Y program. Um, they're gonna have some summer camps. This I'm originally from King, well, Jacksonville, Florida. We just moved here from Kingsland, Georgia. I have seven wonderful children and married to the love of my life, Christopher. Um, we moved here just a, about a month ago. My husband got out of the Navy after 15 years and took a position with QVC since he's originally from here too. 
And we think that the dog park is wonderful. Um, we didn't have one like this back in Kingsland, nor in Jacksonville that you could just take your dog and let them off the leash and let them just kind of acclimate to the other puppies around and Coco seems to really enjoy it and she's met several friends since we've come, even though this is our only our second time. People that like dogs tend to like each other. It tends to go that way. My beautiful dog Coco is a rescue. We adopted her last year um, at two years old, so she's three now. Um, we actually were online looking at the Humane Society for um, a dog and her picture was just gorgeous. Rocky Mountain has been very welcoming since we've gotten here. My husband was actually quite a little worried whether or not I would like it because um, I was very involved in volunteering in Kingsland and the people have been very welcoming since we've got here just walking in the grocery store you get hellos from people so I, I'm enjoying that and I'm looking forward to get back in, into volunteering here. So. I'm Debbie Haggerty. I have uh, Stoli. Her registered name is Stoli on the Rocks, and she is a Welsh Terrier. She's three years old, and she's the love of our lives right now. Got Stoli from a breeder in Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, she was weighs to 18 now, but she would could sit in a coffee cup when we got her. She was tiny. This the woman that we got her from in Lynchburg has raised these dogs for 30 years. Um, they originated the breed in Wales. They hunted fox, badger, and rodents, and they were working dogs. I don't know how many are in the United States. I've never researched that, but she's the only one I've ever seen, except when we went to a convention that had 150 Welsh Terriers there this year. Well, tell me a little bit about that convention then, Daddy. Um, this convention is held every year. It's a benefit for an organization called Welsh Terrier Cares. So it's a fundraiser. Um, they have a great auction there. They have um, a dinner. They have a parade. They have a costume contest. They, uh, the whole town of Southern Pines this year was open to Welsh Terriers. Restaurants, bars, shops, could, all the dogs could go wherever you went. It was a lot of fun. The, sure? the convention is called the Stink Eye because Welsh Terriers, when things don't go their way, which Dolly can do very well, uh, can give you the Stink Eye. So it's called the Stink Eye, and this is the t-shirt from one of the years because that's exactly what they look like. When things don't go well, they cut their eyes at you, and they call it, so that's why they call this fundraiser the Stink Eye. But it was a lot of fun, and the, um, the dogs had a lot of fun. The bark mitzvah, the dogs even had their yarmulkes to wear. They had special treats, and it was just, it was really the highlight of the weekend. Some of the co costumes, I was gonna uh, dress Stoli, since she is named after Stoli Vodka, I was gonna dress her as a martini, but when I saw the elaborate costumes that were there, I withdrew drew my name from the costume contest because it was amazing what those people came up with. John and I have been married 50 years this year. I met him when I moved here in the 10th grade. Um, we've always had dogs since I've very first married life years we had dogs and and we lived here on the site at Riverside Apartments where the dog park is now and it's kind of funny that now we've been married 50 years and here we are full circle from where we lived when we first got married and now we bring our dog out to play it's a wonderful place to be. My name is Kimuel K. Battle. Okay. This is Kimura. Kimura. K. Battle. Right. I mean Kimura Battle I'm right. sorry. Um, she's nine. Um, this is Rocky. Right. Hey, Mr. Rocky. Rocky right here. He's six months old. Sharpe. Right okay, yes. Um, I started with Sharpe's back in um, 2008. Um, I had an auntie that turned me on to him. And actually, the dog that I started with, was, his name was Goldie. Um, brought him up in Durham, North Carolina. Um, it's a great dog. Um, I had him for like maybe seven years. This is one of my grandkids right here, Rocky, um, from the family. Um, I had also a girl, had a, maybe two litters of puppies before. It's a great, great dog. He's very, very um, protective as far as family. Great family dog, great with the kids. Um, he loves the, the, I love the fish, he loves the water. It all goes together. Now, they actually from uh, Japan. Um, they, they, it was actually bred it to protect as far as pit bulls, this is a Japanese pit bull. People didn't really know that as far as with the wrinkles. That's what gives them the distinct 
and that's what his history is known from his wrinkles and his distinct look and he's a, a very good I think underrated watchdog. I'm gonna come here at least twice a week, maybe three times a week. Um, I try to get here in the afternoon, fit in with the schedule. Um, Kamora, you know, she loves them. Um, she has a history with the dogs. You know, when I first got the first boy, Goldie, she was uh, she was attached to him. Um, what I think is that these dogs are very smart because they just listen to you. That's one thing that I like about Sharpay's. And then when they're babies, you, it's, they're so adorable. He's a great show dog. He loves to walk. <laughs> he loves to be seen. You see the color of him. People love him. It's like he's a celebrity around Rocky Mountain. I have to recommend right. him. He's a top breed, no doubt. Ain't that right, Rocky? It's a lot of questions around Rocky Mountain. They see, they try to say they've seen it before, they haven't seen it before, and the first thing they say is, what kind of dog is that? <laughs> and I say, this is a sharp page Japanese. This guy's here. He's one of a kind, and I think the color of his distinct here, he has that lab type color, yeah. and, and people just love him. And I just, like I said, I feel like I got a celebrity dog, which he's well, probably gonna be on that way. You have a rock star dog. A rock star. You're a rock Rocky, star man. Rocky the rock star. You're a rock, star. You're a rock star. You, you got that name, don't you? <laughs> My dog's name is Izzy. Um, she will be eight years old, December 14th. Um, we got her from a breeder in Rocky Mount. Um, right after she was born and you know ready to go um, she loves to play ball it's just something that she's done ever since she was a puppy she will play with the ball all day long even in the house you know if we have her ball in the house she will she's very protective protective over it loves just loves playing ball she doesn't really care about any other toy it's just a ball we love to bring her to the dog park. Um, my mother-in-law brings her a lot because she enjoys, you know, spending time with her. To her, that's her grand dog. Yeah. And that's one of the things that they do mainly together is come out here and play ball because it gets her out, gives her some exercise, and gives Izzy exercise. And she loves it. I'll tell her, um, we're going to go play ball. We're going to the park. And it's like she knows exactly where we're going because her tar tail starts wagging and she's sitting up looking out the window like okay are we there yet let's go let's go let's go and as soon as we get here it's she's chomping at the bit to get out the door can't get her out of the seat belt and everything fast enough we're a little too excited since we're at the park oh boy <laughs> they all think I'm going They were all crying to see you I doing that fence. You. How'd you get out? Oh. Back, I got your eyes. Back up. Back up. Back up, Back up or no ice. We bring them ice water. Oh yeah, I put it right out of the cup. Yep. Yeah, wait till we put some water in it. You gotta wait. I like to eat ice too. Siva, Siva, Siva. No. Yes, they like to climb in it. Back, I got your ice. You got to back up. Back up. Back up. Back up or no ice. We bring them ice water. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They know what it is too. Uh, I don't know about myself. <laughs> well, I understand you're in the service. Uh, I was. I was active duty. My name is Molly Aker and hey, who is your friend? Simon. How long have you had Simon? Since about 2005, 2006. Um, he's a toy poodle. Toy poodle. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I know he's a lot of company for you. Yes. Tell me about, does he do tricks? But you bring him out here sometimes? Yes, he likes to. Sometimes he runs away and comes down here. Right, you, cut, you live nearby? Yes, I live Oh, okay. He runs away and comes down here. Well, my little dog loves to come here, too.
So I'm a student at Wesleyan and one of the girls in my class is from around here and she took an astray and the astray had 12 pups in February and brought it in because our AMP professor was a vet and she checked it out and we were like, oh my gosh, puppies, you know, college kids and dogs. Um, so I talked to her, they had eight left and I ended up taking one home. I've had her since April, so about seven months now. Right, and, and you're in an apartment, so do, so mm -hmm. you come out here to exercise her. Right. Hi, guys. Hey, Zoe. Hey, Zoe. Well, I've had Josie since she was a puppy. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine told me about someone who paid the deposit on her and couldn't take her, so I ended up uh, spending the best hundred bucks I've ever spent on her. She was uh, being sold by a boxer breeder in Bailey, and she was the only, only one out of the whole litter that wouldn't come to me. She sat up on the, uh, on the porch with a pouty look on her face. A challenge. Yep, and I said, that's one. How did you come by Marty? Well, we went to uh, Koi Pond to a adoption event that they had there last year in September, uh -huh. and uh, we fell in love with a little guy when we were when we were there. Was she already on wheels? Uh, he wasn't. No, he, wasn't. he was a little bit obese, and we didn't know it at the time. But he had a IVDD, which is an intervertebral disc disease, a mm -hmm. degenerative disease, and uh, something happened in January, and he ended up with some ruptured discs in his back, and now he's a paraplegic from about here down. It has absolutely no feeling. No, no deep pain sensation whatsoever. Well, you've taken mighty, mightily wonderful good care of uh, her. It's a him. Him, okay. Yeah. Well, tell me, tell me, did you devise the device or did you, were you able to find it or a veterinarian help you? Oh, after, uh, after about six weeks, he had to be in, the, in a crate, in crate rest. We uh, started working with NC State and they told me where to go. And uh, Eddie's Wheels for Pets, is a company up in Massachusetts that custom makes wheelchairs for dogs. And they do rear load or rear carts, front wheel carts, and then quadriplegic carts as well for dogs with uh, Lou Gehrig's disease for dogs, which I believe is a uh, degenerative myelopathy. But uh, they've been making wheelchairs for about 20 years, so we got a bunch of measurements from Marty and uh, ordered him a wheelchair. But how with Marty? Well, we're not really sure how old uh, Marty is. According to the rescuer at the uh, Rocky, Friends of Rocky Mountain Animals, she said he was around five, but he may be a little bit older than that. Well, this is Bash. His full name is actually Sebastian. He is a mixed breed, half Scottish Terrier and half Dachshund Greyhound. I got him in 2006 from a co-worker of mine from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where we are both born and raised. I needed a change of life and I decided to move down here. I had a friend that his daughter lives here in North Carolina. Well, I am a um, SIC right now. I pass medications out and assess people if they need to go out or not at assistant living. But very soon I will be an NA2 for Nash General Hospital. Coming to the dog park is just amazing the people you can meet the dogs different types of dogs that are out there is just wonderful just seeing how everyone can interact and just get along is just amazing to me uh, bash and i come at least about three to four times a week uh, i actually looked up on the internet 
dog parks and found it on the dog on the website and figured it would come one day and of course that day it actually started sprinkling so we couldn't spend a long time but we got here. Um, there's actually a lot of people that I've met. Uh, Bash actually just likes being around other dogs. Come on. Come on boy. I do. Did that boy. Oh, oh, oh. Go play. Go play. Go get him. Good. 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 <laughs> These are my friends. <laughs> These are your parents? They're here. I've got some others here. If you Molly and Diverse. I think Diverse would be great. Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah, you would. Him and Lucy. Oh, Lucy. Lucy, Lou. Blair okay. would be a good one. Yeah. Rosie is a three year old miniature pincher called Minpin by those who are fond of the breed. They come in various colors. Black and tan is most prevalent. This is called red, though it's actually more of a tan color. Miniature pinchers run from about seven to 15 pounds. They're high energy, quiet, and affectionate, but curious. They're great like all dogs. Rosie is not the best dog, but she's as good as the best dog. Rosie was located by my wife on the internet Craigslist by a breeder from Nash County. We'd had a similar dog in the past. The mourning period was over and my wife said that if I didn't get another dog, I would probably drive her bananas. Rosie and I haven't traveled any great depth, but we, a distance, but we travel every day. She, like all dogs, likes to ride. She doesn't pine for me when I'm gone, but she's eager for an adventure, up to a point. And she does expect to come to the dog park every day. Rosie likes everybody. If only the world were like that. Well, Rosie gets along with every dog, unless the dog shows uh, untoward characteristics, but she does have some she's played with before and she's always glad to see them return. Again, not unlike humans. Rosie will sleep pretty much anywhere. She was great trained. She has about a half dozen beds scattered about the house and goes wherever her mood suits her. My preference is she's with me on the bed and she's been known the breed is a burrowing breed and when it's cool she will burrow down under the covers to my feet having a dog is best because it makes you a better person I am a better person for having Rosie and I think it's often true many people are better for their dogs bring out the best in them. Rosie makes me relax, whereas I might otherwise be aggravating sometimes. Rosie makes me think kind thoughts toward my fellow man and other creatures. Rosie makes me curious, whereas I otherwise might be lazy. And Rosie makes me smile. One of the blessings of the dog park is the fascinating, interesting, and for the most part, just likable people that frequent as patrons. I have met dozens and dozens of interesting, pleasant, enjoyable people. I've met people who lived in this town 
but I never knew them, even though I've spent most of my life around Rocky Mount. But also, I've met people who are recently arrived in Rocky Mount within a half dozen years. And I've met people who aren't even from Rocky Mount, but stop here just for the dog park. They're transiting from places far away to other places far away. And the dog park is a brief respite for them and their dogs. And that's good because I wouldn't otherwise ever have met them. The Rocky Mount Dog Park has several features which commend it. The first is its size. It's large enough that one can have a bit of privacy with one's dogs if that's what one prefers. It's large enough that there can be groupings socially of different people without everybody present having to participate in the same group. Like any good park has its natural beauty. It has trees with the wind sounding in them. You can watch the seasons change, the fall color, the spring uh, emerging greenery. There are things to look at. There are always uh, birds flying. We have a pair of hawks that often circles over the park. The dog park here in Rocky Mount has enriched my life. Stick together. 